Our community networks are breaking down, leaving us all without the support that we need. Space technology has the power to rebuild those networks, bring us together, effectively a community hall for the world. How? By combining the technology from satellites with other sources of information to help us as people with all of our quirks and our differences. Let me give you an example. I have an amazing friend who really struggles with anxiety. Being out and about is hard for her. She gets into difficulty with public transport and inconsiderate people, hurried situations and crowds, and she tackles a lot of it alone, as she's one of the many people on the edges of society's groupings, partly due to her numerous physical and mental challenges. Bad weather causes her problems, pollution affects her already laboured breathing, and crowds raise her, her anxiety. Her primary life goal is to remain independent, something that many of us take for granted. And it's hard, it's really hard. She has mobility issues and she can't tell the time, so she has trouble staying in touch with friends and other sources of help. The other day, she was waiting for a bus for over an hour in the pouring rain. When the bus arrived, she was teased by school children, as well as being miserable and wet. This may not sound like a big deal, but if we put ourselves in that situation, soaking wet, no umbrella, no escape, no way out, it becomes clearer. And when she gets on the bus, she's openly mocked. She talks to herself, that makes the mocking worse. So when she gets home, she shuts the door, locks it, and doesn't come out, missing work and other social interactions. She's scared to leave the house. This scenario is real, and it's getting real for more of us. Recent research showed that 2.4 million of us suffer from chronic loneliness. So how can this kind of social problem be solved using satellites? For the first time in history, the combination of space technology and communications, along with personal smart devices, means that anyone, wherever they are in the world, has access to each other and to enormous amounts of beneficial data. Space data comes in lots of different forms. Weather information, photos of the Earth and the atmosphere in lots of different wavelengths, location information, and of course, connectivity. And space data doesn't discriminate along the lines of gender, race, or ability. Nor does it respect national boundaries. This space data has long been able to solve tricky, large-scale, global problems like weather forecasting and flood warning systems, even long-distance TV broadcast. But it's only more recently that we're using it on an individual basis. The combination of personal smart devices, our phones, and Wi-Fi nearly everywhere, combined with a massive upsurge of app development, means that we can now check any number of satellite data-driven algorithms in the palms of our hands. And this same data can bring us closer together as a community, can shrink the world, and can bring those on the edges of society into a more integrated way of life. So how can this help my friend? Well, we know those constellations of navigation satellites are already used on a personal basis, in cars or on our bikes, and in business logistics and transport. So we can track my friend's bus. And you may not have thought about it, but that same information gathered at a personal level is then shared across millions of people to make all of our experiences better when, for example, seeking the best route to a destination. And we're not bad at predicting arrival times. So it's not a big leap to imagine a new kind of app which connects the bus to my friend's phone. And maybe the bus can talk to her. Sorry, I'm going to be late. And maybe the weather could talk to her too. It might look fine outside, but the wind speeds are higher than you like. And the two could be combined. And her network of friends could be linked in as well. And perhaps she tells the app what she's wearing each day, so it knows whether she's prepared. When she goes to leave the house, a message could be activated. Don't go out yet. 
It's going to rain on your street in the next 10 minutes and your bus is stuck in those roadworks behind the station. We'll get back in touch when it's a good time to leave, based on your normal walking pace. And meanwhile, you've got time to go and find that umbrella. The beauty of this is that the technology exists. Nothing needs to be invented. We just need to want to help people and then create the applications centered around the needs of a person. And the big cost is in those constellations of satellites and the infrastructure on the ground that's already being used to solve our tricky world problems. Even better news is that accessing space is getting cheaper and easier all of the time. We can now image every section of the Earth's surface every single day, and we're getting more and more connected via satellite. And it's not about Big Brother. It's about embracing new technology as it becomes available, and then optimizing it for the benefit of all of us. Something my friend has taught me is that technology that could make her life better could make all of our lives better, easier, especially when applied to those moments of high stress like a hospital visit or a job interview. We're all unique. We've all got different behaviours, different personalities, physical, mental, financial even. Combining the wealth of space data with sources of other information and learning about our personal preferences using versions of artificial intelligence can ensure that we create applications that work for us as individuals. Space technology and artificial intelligence go hand in hand. Space technology generates vast quantities of data, and artificial intelligence is brilliant at analysing vast quantities of data. And we're bringing them together in more and more places. Space tech and AI are combining to analyse species at risk of extinction, identifying areas that are most important for their well-being. I can't help thinking we could use that same model for humans, personal early warning systems that help our support networks look after us before we need it, not afterwards. When you visit an elderly relative, do you ever wonder about the panic button? Big red life-saving devices only to be used in moments of extreme necessity. They're safety net. No intervention, no communication until crisis point when emergency support functions kick in. It's scary and it's, it's extreme. A last chance saloon to trigger a rescue response. What if we could replace panic buttons with genuine sources of communication and connectivity for the loneliest? Not just a button to press in an emergency, but a real space-based link to the rest of humanity whenever the need or the desire for company. Wearable technology that monitors the health of an individual and shares it with those that we trust, letting our loved ones know our state of health and anxiety. Technology that links people of similar interests, even though they may be hundreds of kilometres apart. Connections between the friends that always used to play bridge together until they were moved to separate villages to be cared for by their families. Not just a phone call or even a Skype screen, but a real augmented reality game of bridge, sitting together, talking together, feeling close, a better reality. Space technology plays a key role in bridging the gap between those who have and those who don't. SATCOMS is already being used to provide distance learning in remote communities across South America, Russia and Africa, allowing children who were once isolated access to similar standards of education similar chances in life. Not all of us are lucky enough to allow our children to physically expand their horizons. So what if every school had a constant live link to another school far away, several schools? 
Imagine the power of a network of space-enabled friendships from Red Ruth to Rwanda, or across India and Pakistan or Palestine and Israel. We are all far more accepting of things that we understand. So what about those young children on the bus teasing my friend? Well, maybe a society that properly connects us across different cultures and different lifestyles would be less inclined to behave that way. Our modern way of life seems almost designed to create loneliness. But the ubiquity, the equality of satellites can rebuild our fractured communities. Not just the mechanism for communications, but those natural links that tie us together as people. The days of the postie or the milkman knocking on our door to see if our neighbours are okay may be forever gone. But with people on the ground using satellites thousands of kilometres above our head, they can be a new, a ubiquitous and a constantly available source of companionship, of community and of crisis avoidance. Thank you. <laughs>